Let me give you the key to fantasy football in 2024. I have already projected out every wide receiver in fantasy football, and I'm sharing those projections with you right now. This is going to be my top 12 wide receivers. So let's get into it right now with number 12, Debo Samuel. I have him projected for 15.7 points per game, 76 catches, a little over 1,100 yards, 8.5 total touchdowns, and 296 rushing yards. Last year, he averaged 16.5 points per game, but he missed a couple games, and some he left early. If you take out those games that he left early, he averaged 18 and a half points. Now you may be wondering how did I go down in his projection? Well, he did score 12 total touchdowns last year. I think that's very hard to do again, so I lowered that number. But outside of that, I think he does get more receptions, and overall, I think he has a great season. Number 11 is the rookie Marvin Harrison Jr., also projected at 15.7 points, but I do prefer him over Debo Samuel. The difference, in my opinion, is Debo Samuel, we already know what he is. He's going to be very up and down throughout the entire season, where I think Marvin Harrison starts off a little slow, and he keeps exponentially getting better as the season goes by. I have him at 87 receptions. 1,314 yards, eight total touchdowns, averaging about 15 yards per catch. I think he's going to be a pretty good deep threat, and Kyler scrambles a lot, giving him a lot of time downfield to look for these deep ball passes, so I think we should see a good amount of big plays. The offense should play very fast-paced. They're in a division that's going to score a lot of points. Their defense is not great, so they're going to have to play catch-up in a lot of games. And outside of Trey McBride, there really is no other target competition. He's going to get so much work. My wide receiver 10 is Puka Nakua at 16.6 points. I got him at 96 receptions, 14 1,511 yards and seven and a half total touchdowns. Comparing this to last year, I gave him one and a half more touchdowns, but I knocked down his receptions and his receiving yards just a little bit because Cooper Cup did miss six games. I think Puka will get a little bit more lucky scoring touchdowns though. Six is pretty low for the insane usage he got last year, but he really wasn't used in the red zone that often. He only had 16 targets. You compare this to Cooper Cup who had 19 in only 11 games. Puka played 17. It's clear Cup is getting the full workload in the red zone, but this Rams offense will be super pass heavy, very high powered, very condensed, between Cup and Puka. Nothing else is really going to bother them. And you have that added upside where if something does happen to Cup, Puka could be top three. Nine is AJ Brown, also projected at 16.6 points, 92 receptions, 1,408 yards, and 8.25 touchdowns. Last season through the first eight or so weeks, everybody was comparing him to Tyree Kill. Was he the second best receiver in the NFL? Maybe top three. And then he completely fell off the face of the earth along with the entire Eagles offense. I'm going to say that was mostly a product of the coaching last year, and I think he'll be more efficient than he was last year. But I don't think will get quite the volume he had because bringing in Saquon Barkley is going to really bolster up that run game and I think they're going to want to give him 20 touches a game as well. Not to mention Devonta Smith wasn't too great last year. Dallas Goddard really didn't do anything either so I think everybody kind of bounces back. A.J. Brown was really the only one who was able to be great for most of the season. It's just one of those things where the offense has so many good players around him and with Jalen Hurts and Saquon Barkley I think they run enough where A.J. Brown doesn't really have top three receiver upside at all but he will be pretty boom bust having a couple 35 point games here and there. My wide receiver number eight I guarantee guarantee I'm higher on him than anybody else in the industry. It is Cooper Cup at 17.2 points per game. Now, I have him with more receptions and less yards than Puka Nakua, but definitely scoring more touchdowns at 9.5. As I already said, he had 19 red zone targets in 11 games. If you pace that out throughout the season, he's either first or second behind C.D. Lamb. Sean McVay said a couple weeks ago that Cooper Cup was dealing with so many injuries that we don't really know about last season, and then he doubled down on that six days ago, saying we have absolutely no clue how hard it was for Cooper Cup to play last year, but he still did. So two years ago, he is the best wide receiver season of all time in fantasy. The next year, he was on pace to break the all-time receptions record. Then he got hurt. And last year, he dealt with injuries the entire year. I think if you're not afraid of injuries, this is the perfect time to buy low on the biggest bounce back candidate in the entire NFL. As I said, Stafford is probably going to throw for 5,000 yards. This offense is so condensed and he has that role where he's going to be more of the slot receiver, getting about 13 yards per catch and he dominates that red zone role. Moving on to wide receiver seven, another guy that I've ranked way above market is Devontae Adams at 17.9 points per game. Now, a lot of people are going to hate this ranking. I have him at 108 catches, 1,328 yards, and 10 and a half touchdowns. Two years ago, he was averaging over 19 points per game. Last year, he was at 15.6, and that feels like the absolute worst outcome possible. He looks like just the great receiver he has every single year, but his quarterback play and his offense was absolutely catastrophic. They literally switched coaches mid-year, and after the coaching change, he averaged over 16 points a game. That's including a game where he literally got one catch for like 0.4 yards. So if you exclude that, he was averaging over 18 a game. The dude is balling. We're not sure who the star is yet. It's either Aiden O'Connell or Gardner Minshew. If it is Gardner Minshew, he's the guy who gave Michael Pittman 9.5 targets per game last year. He was like top eight in all those types of categories. And I think the Raiders are actually becoming a competent organization at this point. I think they're really building around Antonio Pierce. The defense is getting pretty strong. And Devontae is going to dominate the red zone. He had 25 targets in the red zone last year. That was third in the league. You could tell me he scores 15 touchdowns through the air and leads all receivers, and I wouldn't be shocked at all. Moving on to Amon Ross St. Brown. Here's our wide receiver six, averaging 18.8 points per game. I got him a little bit lower than last year. 
last year just because he ran hot on touchdowns. I have him at 8.5, 1,488 yards, and 120 catches. His yards per catch is what's holding him back. It's only at 12.4, and for the type of receiver he is, I don't really see that going up unless he has some crazy efficient Debo Samuel type of year, where his run after catch ability just randomly spikes. I don't think he's that great of a wide receiver run after the catch. He's definitely a capped player where I think he's always going to be a top 10 wide receiver in terms of fantasy, maybe pushing top five, but I don't think he ever has that wide receiver one through three upside season. But he is in a top three offense in the league, getting very easy targets week in, week out. So I think it's a very safe pick. Wide receiver five. Now we're getting to the guys with the real upside that could be the wide receiver one overall. I got Garrett Wilson. For me, he's averaging 20 points a game. He's getting 116 catches overall, 1,670 yards and nine and a half touchdowns. I don't think this is crazy at all. People really underestimate how bad the Jets offense was. They were by far the worst team in the NFL last year in terms of red zone success. I just found out this cool stat today. Did you guys know Brees Hall had one goal line carry last year? That's how bad they were actually getting to the red zone. The Jets in total had three goal line carries last year overall. Going from Zach Wilson and all the other bums they had to start last year to Aaron Rodgers is probably the biggest upgrade the league has ever seen. And we have perennially seen with Devontae Adams and Aaron Rodgers, when you get a good route runner with Aaron Rodgers, he constantly throws them open and has that mind meld connection with them. We saw it in the preseason a little bit last year. They're going to be so good in the red zone. I think nine and a half touchdowns is playing it safe. I wanted to put it at like 10 and a half and maybe even 11. You may be thinking 116 receptions is a lot, but last year he only had 95 on 165 targets. Tyree Kill, for some perspective, over the last three years has had about 171 targets. Last year, 170 the year before, 159 the year before that. He caught the ball 111, 119, and 119 times. So if we're giving Garrett Wilson a little bit more targets than he had last year, which was once again 165, I don't see how he doesn't almost crack 120. And they also gave him a big boost in terms of yards per catch. Last year, he was at about 12. This year, I got him over 14.4 just because the offense will be so much more efficient. Then we get to wide receiver four, Jamar Chase. I hear a lot of people thinking that he could be the easy wide receiver one this season. I'm not so sure about that. The biggest concern, the elephant in the room, Joe Burrow's hand, how healthy is it going to be? Not to mention, I get he had backup quarterback play last year, but Jamar Chase was not that great. He only had five games over 15 PPR points last season. That's kind of bad considering Justin Jefferson did that pretty pretty easily when he missed way more games. I've chased at 119 receptions, 1,666 yards, and 11 total touchdowns. He's obviously a great receiver, but I don't think he's going to make a push for the wide receiver one spot this year. Now we get to the big three. Wide receiver three, this is a lot of people's wide receiver one. It's C.D. Lamb. I have him averaging 21.6 points. I have him at 128 receptions, 1,664 yards, and 12 touchdowns. A couple reasons this is a little bit lower than last year. I don't think he gets quite as many targets. I get the situation is just as bad but last year was like a real outlier with the insane amount of work he got. I've been being a little bit less efficient with the receiving yards. I still got him at 12 touchdowns. That's very respectable, but he also had two rushing touchdowns. I had to take those away. That's just something I can't predict year in, year out. Ultimately for me, the biggest factor of why he is not in my top two came down to talent. I think the top two guys are the two best wide receivers in the league, and it doesn't matter what quarterback they're playing with. They are going to produce at such an insane level. So with that being said, Number two, Justin Jefferson at 22.3 points per game, 124 receptions, 1,959 yards, and 10 total touchdowns. The crazy thing is this may be underselling him with 10 touchdowns. He's been pretty bad in terms of scoring touchdowns in his career. Even though he has a ton of red zone targets, it was just a year ago when he had 1,800 yards and 28 red zone touches, but he still wasn't able to score a crazy amount of touchdowns. I think that positively regresses this year, and we could, if he does, you know, completely go nuts, get 12 touchdowns, which would probably be the wide receiver one on the season. We saw last year when he played with Nick Mullins and all the other garbage backups, he still was absolutely insane, even coming off a hamstring pull. Over those final four weeks, he averaged 22.4 points per game. It's very clear that this Minnesota offense is going to be the most pass-heavy in the entire league. It doesn't matter if it's J.J. McCarthy or Sam Darnold. I do not care. He is going to produce. T.J. Hawkinson is going to miss most of the year, if not the full year, and Jordan Addison simply is not better than Justin Jefferson. There's no way he really competes enough to really affect Jefferson. Don't be surprised if he leads the league in yards and receptions i think that the touchdowns are the thing holding him back from number one though so without further ado my wide receiver one quite a bit above everybody else 24 points per game is tyree kill i got him at 130 receptions 2028 yards and 12 and a half touchdowns now you may be thinking to yourself wow that would be breaking the all-time record that's kind of crazy to predict well we have an extra game in 17 game seasons and last year and the year before he was on pace to break it both times the first year Tua got hurt missed five games obviously that's going to suck for tyree the second year last year, he averaged 26 points per game until he played the Titans in week 14. He rolls his ankle, gets a high ankle.
ankle sprain, then he misses a game, then he comes back, he's a little slow, he ends up with 23 and a half points per game. So the crazy thing is, at 24 points per game, I might be underselling him a little bit because throughout the whole season, until he got hurt, he was averaging over 26. The real thing that differentiated him last year from the year before in Miami is the year before he had 11 red zone targets. Next year, last year, he had 25. They clearly made it a very big point to get him the ball in important areas, which is so huge in fantasy. Comment what you would change here, leave a like and follow, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.